Hello, my name is Matthew Cobham and I am responsible for museums and gallery lighting at ERCO. And we are very proud to be sponsoring this Museums Association event. And over the next 15, 20 minutes or so, we're going to look at uh, how light hopefully can bring value uh, to museums um, and help them, the visitor experience, uh, improve and for museums to become more accessible. How are we going to structure the presentation? We're going to start with a little bit of introduction, um, some reminders on some of the fundamentals of, of, of light and how they interact with, with artworks. And then we're going to look at the, the whole topic under kind of two axes, uh, if you like, out of many hundreds that we could consider this, this topic under the headings of quantity of light and also quality of light. And I thought it would be great if we were to start with one of the great masters of light and darkness and finding the right balance to create engagement. Of course, Turner, um, who really uh, spoke to us through uh, his uh, balance of, of light and, and, and darkness. And, and of course, it's not, a, not an easy topic. I mean, I've been working in the lighting world, shall we say, for the last almost 25 years, and I'm always in really inspired when we look at an image of just pure light itself. And here we are, we have pure light. Because, of course, we only see direct light from whatever the light source be, whether it be natural or electric, or reflected light. And that fundamental, if you like, basis can serve us so well when we're, of course, thinking about lighting uh, artworks and in any other light lighting situation which we can uh, think about. Because, of course, the way we perceive light is pretty complex. The eye-brain system and the way we perceive different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum from when they, when they enter the eye right the way through to when they hit the, 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 the visual cortex at the back of, our, back of our brain is an extremely complex process uh, which, we're not, which goes beyond this, this, this presentation. But it's worth considering that it is a complex topic and, of course, great if light can be considered uh, as a, an important element within museums and, and galleries. Because, of course, they are for everyone, whether they be uh, younger groups or you know, mixed groups or for uh, older groups of uh, people. And everything is changing. And I don't need to tell you this. If you can look at any of the uh, statistics, which you can either see in the newspapers or, or online, you can easily find this kind of uh, information. Uh, for example, The Economist a few years ago published an, uh, an article called Age Invaders, where they estimated, uh, based on many sources of information, that over the next few years, over 65-year-olds will double. Um, and, you know, you can look at, find many sources of uh, information there. And, of course, those are a very, you know, and maybe even increasingly important group of visitors for museums and, and galleries, as well as, of course, all uh, other uh, age groups. And what is also interesting is when we look at that globally, Country by country, um, here's just a selection of, of countries from uh, World Bank data. You can see the graph is, is pretty clear. The trend is, 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 is on the up. So it's all about, of course, creating the right uh, uh, visual circumstances and experience, as well as finding the right balance with conservation of different artworks. And today, there are possible solutions for that. Um, sometimes when people, certain groups of people, uh, and for example, people with visual impairments need higher illuminance levels, 
that can potentially present some challenges if we're talking about the conservation of certain types of artwork. How to approach this topic so we can create good visual conditions, not, not necessarily an, uh, an easy one. If we just take one aspect of that, very simple, as, a simple in a sense aspect of it, just the fact that the human uh, lens, eye lens, just decolors over, over, over time, uh, then you can see why this, this is potentially challenging. So you can see here a range of uh, different uh, age groups, uh, discoloration of, of the lens, and crystallization actually of the lens, so that it becomes yellower basically, simply means less light getting through the lens. That clearly uh, is potentially one uh, aspect. And that, another topic and which we could go into a lot more detail on is the fact that because it is yellowing, it actually absorbs uh, a lot of the, the bluer parts of the, of the spectrum uh, as well. So there are a whole range of things uh, linked to that. But if we're talking about artworks, uh, then that potentially could uh, reduce the enjoyment for certain groups of, of, of people. So, as I mentioned in the, in, in the introduction, let's just kind of attack this, this topic under, you know, from, from two angles. And let's start by looking at the quantity light of light uh, aspect, if you, if, if you like. First of all, of course, as we mentioned in the introduction, that is important for vision, for different groups of people. So, you know, different people need different quantities of light. Uh, that's all summed up in many national recommendations and also international recommendations. Here you see the main uh, international recommendations for, for light for, for visual impairment. I was actually involved in this uh, uh, committee that, that, that wrote this, this paper some, some years back. Um, and they are only recommendations, so that's, that's the important point. But they, they can help perhaps give a little bit of guidance, some, some hints about some sensible things, at least kind of starting points. There are more specific recommendations as well, uh, linked to museums and galleries. Here I've got an example, as I live in France, I've got an example uh, here from France, uh, produced by the, the French Cultural Ministry, uh, with some recommendations, not just from a lighting aspect, but in, in also from all aspects of accessibility to help people move around museum and cultural spaces. So, could be an interesting document, and of course, you know, there are UK documents uh, that are relevant there as well. So, that's, that's the first part linked to just vision, if you like, and just being able to get around safely, of course, first of all, but to be able to, to see artworks in the right, the, right, the right way. The second angle, if you like, of course, is linked to conservation. And as I already hinted at, this isn't exactly necessarily in line with the need to be able to see artworks. Because as you well know, if we're talking about delicate items, typically uh, a lower luminance level is uh, proposed. That could be fine, particularly for younger people, uh, because well, people with good vision, no problem. But if we talk about the, the older groups of people, um, and just a reminder, of course, that group increasing in numbers massively, that could be a uh, consideration. Again, summed up in various national recommendations and also international uh, lighting recommendations. This is uh, these are the recommendations that were written uh, some some years ago, uh, and there are more there are more up to date versions of this uh, as well. So, quantity of light uh, one or vision one part of the the equation, if you like, conservation uh, another important part of the e equation, and then we bring if you like another layer to that, which is about storytelling. Because of course, um, you know, the picture or whatever the artwork is has huge, normally, uh, quantities of stories to tell. And very often, some of you, uh, curators and other people working as museum guides, uh, 
help bring that to life. And it's about finding that right uh, balance, almost in a way, we're touching theatre in a way, to be able to tell stories and, and help people um, uh, really understand and get excited about all these fabulous things that we have in your museums and galleries. So I thought we'd just go through a little example. Um, and I've tried to sort of simplify it, and I know I'm fully aware I'm perhaps oversimplifying it, but let, let's just go through it, and perhaps it'll provoke some, some ideas. So what I've done here is I've sort of brought together, or I've distilled the international recommendations, a little bit of quite dry reading on, on light and conservation onto one slide, you'll be pleased to hear. And on the left-hand side, you can see uh, certain uh, artifacts like stoneworks, uh, you know, Roman stoneworks, for example, typically not very sensitive to light. Um, and on the other end of the scale, silks, watercolors like that, uh, like you know, a Turner watercolor or any other watercolor, extremely delicate potentially, uh, and everything in between. Of course, a, 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 interesting to remind ourselves that uh, oil colors, as one example, typically talked about as being of medium sensitivity, but it depends on who the artist was. There were some very well-known artists who used, some time, during their lifetime, used cheaper materials, and actually their oil colors are very uh, delicate. I've included one example there on, on, the, on the image there. But anyway, we end up with a kind of a formula of, so, you know, lux, lux hours, which is purely a guideline. So let's get, look at an example. Here we've got uh, an incredibly uh, delicate uh, uh, photograph, one of the first photographs uh, from the 19th uh, century. Um, if we look at the recommendations, classified as being very delicate, 15,000 lux hours per year. So that could present some challenges. Either you light that at a, a low illuminance level for a slightly long period of time, or now we're taking another extremely delicate item, or perhaps you can increase the illuminance level um, and then, of course, massively shorten the, the, the time could be, could be a choice, and then um, in, in this case, you end up uh, with you know, another period of time. I won't go through all of the, the details there. Um, or we could increase the, the luminous level. And continuing this, here we have some Egyptian uh, papyrus, um, increase the luminous level to perhaps a luminous level that is suitable for uh, older people uh, or people with visual impairment. But of course, the time is significantly shortened. So that clearly could present some challenges. If you've got an exhibition, Cleopatra ex exhibition, um, which you want to run for several months, for example. Or we could take another scenario with control systems, which can adapt depending on what is need, simply perhaps turn the light off if there is nobody uh, there and then just bring it up for certain groups of people, and then you know, massively, of course this is all based on assumptions, but then increase the exposure time, uh, and of course, at the end of the day, time means more visitors. So, particularly with all museums and galleries, trying to get people back, of course, into all of your wonderful museums, uh, that could be very, very significant. So one angle, okay? That's all around the kind of quantity of light. The second part of, is around the quality of light. Again, it's a huge topic. I'm gonna, I've just distilled it down into a couple of slides. Uh, here using the example of one of my favorite uh, American artists, Beaufort, Beaufort Delaney. Uh, you know, would this be the right way to, to show this, this uh, artwork, or would it be this? Certainly we don't have the answer. It's about what we try to, to do is provide you with the, with the choice. Could it be this? Another, another option, or would it be this? Um, there isn't a right answer from my side on this, except just to point out that all of the, you know, the, 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 if you like, the lighting tools are there now 
to, to enable you to make the choice and then it's up to our job of obviously to work with you to, to, to find the right solution. Here, here's a, an example I found in, in, in Spain, kind of before and afterwards, um, and I remember the curator there literally uh, telling me how they had kind of sort of re-explored, if you like, the, the painting from before, this is before, and then afterwards, um, this wonderful Sorolla uh, painting. And it had literally kind of uh, brought, it to, brought it to life. So just sort of bringing this uh, short presentation to, to an end now, um, you know, the message which I've sort of interwoven, if you like, into, into the story is that all of the, the flexibility uh, and the tools are there now to be able to do this. And also, it's been made a lot easier. Previously, lighting controls and lighting systems were potentially a little bit complex. And now, it's possible for you to really sort of have that literally in your hand on, you know, for example, on your smartphone and for you to be able to, to, to control the light. Um, and in, for example, for that not necessarily just to be controlled from the top of a ladder at three or four meters where it's difficult to see what it's like for, for the vista, but you, you know, in front of the, the painting or artwork for you to be able to make those, those adjustments um, very, very uh, easily. Just to, just to summarize, let's just go through a, a couple of points. Of course, you know, it's, it's all about the, this kind of collaboration and uh, being able to talk together um, and to find the right solutions. This is, this is the first point. And then it's about you know, finding the, the right solutions uh, in terms of uh, storytelling. Of course, respecting conservation always. And simple message, the lighting solutions are there today um, for you to work with and where you're always very, very uh, pleased, very, very excited as well to discuss all of that with you. So I'd like to thank you all very much indeed for your time and we look forward very much indeed to talking with you and together hopefully finding some fabulous lighting solutions for you and together with your visitors to have wonderful visitor experiences. <music>